Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and the beginning of episode 3 in our new series, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Detour Modding. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be going over the visual reference files uh, for Diablo 2 Resurrected and Legacy, uh, how they talk to each other, and how easy it is to edit them. Uh, this is going to be a simpler, quicker video. Um, they'll continue to get more in-depth as we go along in the series, uh, but for now, let's just jump right into it. Um, but I will say that if you are enjoying uh, resurrected modding content, you're interested in learning more, or just enjoying how it works, uh, don't hesitate to like or subscribe. It uh, really helps both me and you out. So uh, with that said, I'm going to roll right into it. Uh, so the first thing is, again, there's uh, reference files that we're going to be looking at today, and there's three main ones that we're going to go ahead and edit, show, how, show what happens in-game, and just how they kind of link together. Um, so with that said, the three files we care about are going to be missiles.json, monsters.json, and items.json. Um, now these are all located in the HD folder. Um, they'll be in separate subfolders, but they'll all be in the HD folder. Um, and if you haven't seen episode two yet of our series, um, I'd strongly recommend going over that. Um, but assuming you have already watched it, um, we're going to go ahead and hop into our cask storage and start grabbing out all the game files we need so that we can start editing them. Um, so with that said, again, they're in the HD folder. So we'll grab our first one here in HD missiles. And again, it's just called missiles.json. So um, I've already created the necessary folders uh, we'll need for the mod to kind of, you know, recreate that. So all I'm going to do is grab missiles.json and drag it into the folder. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other two files we need. So again, we'll go to data HD, monsters is in the character folder. So we're going to grab that and move that over. And then finally, we're going to grab our item reference file. Um, there is technically three of them, but essentially the sets and uniques uh, works almost identically to your items, JSON. It's just going to be for those item qualities. Uh, so I'm going to show you items.json and we can you can just apply it to you know whatever you're working on. Um, but we'll just drag that over there. So we have all our three re reference files, and these are special and important in Resurrected um, because what they do is directly link uh, whatever is in the .txt file that Legacy used, um, and it now links it to a Diablo II Resurrected file um, so it knows what uh, HD graphics and animations and et cetera to use. Um, so now that we've done all that, let's go into those files and kind of show you what they're all about. So we'll just start up here with our monsters.json file and get that opened up. And so you can see here from the looks of it, it's actually a very simple file. So this is just an A to B comparison file. And what it's doing here is it's taking all the entries in .txt. Um, so I think I have one of those open, let's see here. So if we look at our monstats.txt file, uh, again, this is kind of what Legacy uses to, to control um, all the gameplay aspects of the monsters, um, we can see all these same listings, skeleton one through five, zombie one through five. Um, so you can see those same kind of listings here. Now, what this JSON file then is doing is saying for this entry in .txt, I want you to use this JSON file. So you can see that for all five skeletons, it's using skeleton one.json. Um, and so just to show you that real quick, um, if I go to data HD, character, enemy, and I should be able to scroll down here and see our skeleton. And there's our skeleton JSON file. So this is just, again, it's a reference file. This is what points um, resurrected to uh, the kind of HD components. So especially if you're creating a, a new monster or editing you know, an existing one with a new name, something like that, um, you need to kind of create a, a new reference um, to your monster name as well as whatever JSON file you're using. We will go more into depth into that when we start doing uh, actual monster editing and attaching things and, and stuff like that. But just know that every monster needs a reference, even if you're reusing a previous reference. So obviously all these skeletons are using skeleton one. There's no reason you can't make a skeleton six and also have it use the skeleton one JSON file. Um, that's not a big deal. 
But anyways, what we're going to do just for demo purposes, kind of show how all this works, is I'm going to take Fallen 1, which is obviously found in, in Bloodmore, so we can, uh, you know, access that very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and change it to Diablo. So what this is going to tell Resurrected is that for the Fallen 1 monster, I want you to use the JSON file for Diablo. Um, now, obviously, because we're using Diablo's JSON file, it's going to look like J uh, Diablo. Um, it's going to, in some ways, behave like Diablo um, as far as like animations and things go. But because in .text, it's still unedited, it's your normal kind of fallen, it's still going to do the damage of a fallen, it's going to have the skills of a fallen, the AI, etc. Um, so you do want to obviously edit things to match better, you know, depending on what you're going for. But this is just to show you again how easy it is to change things visually um, between kind of two things. Um, so we'll start the mod in a couple minutes, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and save that change and we'll move on to our next file here. Uh, next one is going to be largely the same thing, but for missiles. Um, as you can see, we've got a giant mess right now with this file. If you're using Visual Studio Code, which I, I do recommend as the preferred editor, uh, just right click anywhere, select Format Document, and it's all pretty again. Um, so again, you can see this is going to follow a very similar um, idea to the monsters.json file. It's going to take a missile from the .text. So if I go in missiles.txt and we look here, we can see, again, all these same kind of uh, missiles here. And then once more, they're referenced to a JSON file that you would find in HD missiles. So if I go over here, go to HD missiles, we should be able to see arrow.json, javelin.json, etc. So there's our arrow.json. Um, and then obviously there's our javelin.json. So this is how it's telling it, again, what JSON to use. So like last time, I'm going to just do something like we're going to change javelin to, I don't know, let's make it look like a bone spear. Uh, so just for fun, we're making a javelin look like a bone spear when it's thrown. Um, and then finally, we'll go ahead and go to our items and show that. So as you can imagine, with the other two files being examples, this is going to work almost identically to the other two. It's going to take an item code from .text. So we'll just look at HAX, which uh, in you know legacy would be a hand axe item code. Um, and in uh, this portion, it's telling it where to find the JSON uh, and uh, also the, the sprite model, uh, but where to find the JSON for that, that hand axe. Um, so once more, if we go back to Cask and we start exploring this folder here, we should see what's going on. So we go to HD items, obviously a hand axe in the game. It knows it's a weapon because it's in weapons.txt and et cetera. So we'll go in the weapon folder and then it says that we should go to axe hand axe. So in the axe folder, I now see the hand axe folder, which contains like all the models and textures and whatnot, as well as the JSON file which again, this is going to link everything, um, all the sprite, model, animation, etc. cetera. Um, it's going to link all that there. So again, it works essentially identical. The only difference is this is also now pointing to a location um, with this subfolder here, as opposed to the previous files, which weren't really in subfolders. So they were always just referencing the JSON file name. Uh, but because there's so many different item types, um, they reference the, the, the folder name before the JSON name in items. But all we're going to do is I'm just going to take something like, uh, I don't know, let's take a U wand and we're going to make a hand axe look like a U wand. Obviously, there's no good reason for that, but just for you know example purposes, we're going to go and save that. So quick recap, we've changed our fallen one, our uh, monsters in Bloodmore to uh, look like Diablo. We've changed our javelin to now look like a bone spear when it's thrown. Um, and finally, for items, any hand axe um, in the game is now going to look like, unless it's a unique or something with its own image, uh, is now going to look like a U1. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to show you the shortcut real quick. So this is the you know argument I'm going to use to start our, our mod here. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and get that going and show you exactly how all those changes took effect.
All right, so first thing we'll do is just go ahead and show that uh, hand axe change real quick. Uh, let's go over here, Charcy. Oh, and it didn't like something about that. Ah, I know what it was. That was actually my fault. So it's a good thing we did that live so you can uh, see how easy it is to make mistakes. So um, because I was for just kind of talking and not really listening to my own words, um, I did forget that that JSON file is not in the axe. Um, so I need to tell it the correct folder to find that that you want.json file. Um, and that was obviously my mistake for uh, just not paying attention there. So let's try that one more time, shall we? There we go. So now you can see it's still a hand axe. It's still going to behave like a hand axe. Um, however, it doesn't look like a hand axe anymore. Um, so the cell counts don't match the, um, you know, actual who can use it and all that stuff. It, it still behaves like a hand axe because we didn't change anything in the text for it. Um, but it visually is now looking at the U1 JSON file. Um, so again, when I equip this, it now looks like a, a wand. It doesn't look like a hand axe. Um, and that's because I'm telling it which um, JSON to use, and that controls both the sprite and the model. Um, so again, we see how easy it is to change that. Let's go ahead and look at some of our other changes here. So first thing we want to do is test our javelin. And we now have a javelin that looks like a bone spear. So again, it's still going to behave like a javelin. You're still losing quantity. It's still going to do physical damage, all that stuff. We didn't touch anything in .text, but we changed it visually. And obviously, our fallen, we now have fallen. So again, they're not running around like a Diablo would, casting Diablo lightning, all this kind of stuff. Um, they're using Diablo's visuals as well as his animations. But in .text, he's still a fallen with low damage and slow speed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you can easily see how quickly uh, you can start changing visuals of things using whatever references you like. Um, and obviously, it's not limited to existing um, things or um, assets. Um, so for example, um, maybe if I were in, uh, let's check out missiles.json. So maybe I want a javelin to look like a bone spear, but I want to change some things on it. Maybe I want to edit the color. Maybe I want to add some more uh, clones of it to, to thicken it up some, add some particle effect, etc. cetera. Um, but I want to leave the original bone spear. I don't want to edit that one also. Um, so what I can do is just clone that. Um, so I can tell Javelin to use bone spear two. And then all I have to do is go and find my bone spear.json and clone it and rename it bone spear.2. Um, so then the original missile would still use bone spear, um, but any new missile or the javelin would use bone spear 2 because that's just kind of what I've copied and pasted and that's what I've told it to use. Um, so you do have some freedom there. Uh, obviously, if you're adding new monsters, missiles, etc., cetera, you, you have to add the new reference here. Um, and it, I guess it is important to say that um, your last line should not have a comma, but every line up until your last one should have a comma. This tells the JSON file that it basically it's continuing. Um, so when you go to add a new one, just make sure you add a comma here. Then you can type in whatever you want um, for your, your missile, um, but just make sure you have that, that comma to let it know it's, it's still going. Um, but with that said, again, it's uh, it's a very simple process. It's just linking whatever's in .text, um, the entry name here, to a proper JSON file to use for resurrected. Um, so I apologize if that was a little long-winded, but hopefully you got a good understanding of um, how the text and the JSONs can start linking together, um, and frankly, how easy it is to change things visually and get things going in the direction you want. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to episode four. We'll have that here in a couple days. Um, and thank you for being a part of the D2R modding community. Have a wonderful rest of the day and take care. Bye.